So you start breeding rabbits and there are all these dates floating around when you bred the doe, when they get their nesting box, when they're supposed to have their babies, when you wean them, when you butcher them, when you rebreed them. Like how are you supposed to keep this all straight? Especially if you have more than one doe. We're talking about that today on The Homestead. Hi everybody, thanks so much for stopping by The Homestead. My name is Sarah from Living Traditions Homestead. And in the uh, series that we are doing on raising meat rabbits, today's topic is on record keeping. Now this may seem like a really stupid topic, but once you start raising rabbits and you have more than one doe, you will understand very quickly as life becomes busy, you forget when you're supposed to put in that nesting box. When are your rabbits supposed to have babies? When are they supposed to be weaned? And when are you supposed to butcher them? So I wanted to share with you today my system of how I keep track of everything. And let me tell you, now that we have expanded our rabbit tree and have 10 breeding does, it is more important than ever for me to know what is going on. So I am gonna share with you how I keep track of everything. Okay, you guys, because I like you so much, I'm sharing with you my record keeping secrets. Now, the whole plan revolves around using this rabbit breeding log. Now, this is a log that I use for every one of my does um, and helps me keep everything straight. And then I transfer this information to a calendar. But let me just go over with you this rabbit breeding log and because I like you so much, we are actually going to have a link to this in a PDF um, in the description of this video so that you can download this and start uh, using this in your rabbit tree. Okay, so this is where all the magic happens in our rabbit tree. Um, I keep track of everything on here. So each of my does has one of these. And it has an, an area here for me to uh, put the does name or their cage number. I don't name does anymore because I just have too many of them and I kind of, you know, go through them every couple of years. I have a new one, uh, but if you name yours, you're, that's fine. So um, the name um, or the cage number, this is number three. She's all white. I put that there and her date of birth so I can keep track of how old she is. And then in this little spreadsheet here, this handwritten spreadsheet, I can keep track of the breeding date, the nesting box date that I need to give her a nesting box, when she's expected to have her babies, which in rabbit keeping is called Kindle, um, and her actual Kindle date, the number of her babies that was born alive, the numbers that were born dead, uh, when I need to rebreed her, uh, the uh, date that I need to wean her babies and the date that those babies are to be butchered. Um, so in this example, you can see at the top here, um, I bred number three um, on February 1st and then I counted out 25 days and that was her nesting box date was 227. She was expected to kindle anywhere from 28 to 31 days. So that is March 1st to uh, March 4th. And then I record the actual Kindle date, how many she had, um, how many were dead, and then uh, her rebreed date. Now, at first, you're only going to know her breed date, the date to give her nesting box, and the date that you expect her to have her babies. And so that's the first portion here that you would uh, mark down. Now, once she has her babies during this expected Kindle date, you're going to be watching that uh, nesting box every single day to check for babies when she actually has her babies, write it down. Now, then you can calculate when you are wanting to rebreed her. On our homestead, we rebreed two weeks after she has babies. Now, the gestation period for rabbits is uh, 28 to 31 days. So technically, she could have babies every 30 days, every 31 days. Um, but I don't want to rebreed her on the day that she had her babies. I think she needs a rest period and two weeks is fine. So every six weeks we're breeding, which is two weeks after the date that she kindles. So after she has her babies, I calculate the date that I should rebreed her and put that here. Um, and then I mark down when I need to wean them and put them in the rabbit tractors. 
and then the date that we can butcher them and take them either to the freezer or to the farmer's market. So that is how I use this um, spreadsheet. So after I put things onto the rabbit log, then I record everything just on a calendar. Now, I am not a super fancy person, and um, you know, I don't use a calendar app in my phone very often. I'm just, I don't know why, it just doesn't work well for me. I need something that I can go when I'm drinking my coffee in the morning and say, okay, this is what I need to do today, or this is what's coming up this week. And so um, what works best for me is to transfer the information from my rabbit log onto my calendar every couple weeks or so to make sure that I know what is coming up. So, uh, for instance, um, coming up this week um, on, you know, I, I had to give a nesting box to uh, number four on Sunday, and then we're scheduled to butcher um, a, a, um, a litter on the 18th. So this just helps me keep everything straight along with like our family things that are going on. You know, I need to give a nesting box to number four on this date and then on this date we need a butcher number four and on this date we need to give a nesting box to number five and it just helps me know what I'm supposed to do and, and not to miss anything because the worst thing that I want to do is to have babies that uh, are given birth to on the wire because I forgot to give the mom a nesting box or you know I waste the opportunity to get the babies out of the cage with the mom and into a rabbit tractor so that they can start eating some of the uh, natural grass and stuff so I'm not feeding pellets as much and, and not saving money as fast as I can. This is the system that I have in place to keep everything in order. The last tip and trick that I have for you is to label the mom's cage and have a movable label for the uh, rabbit tractor that you're going to be putting her babies in. Um, you know, like I said before, um, all of our rabbits are, you know, their cages are numbered, so number one through number ten. And if I have multiple uh, litters of rabbits going into, you know, five or ten rabbit tractors, it's hard to remember who is where and when we're supposed to process those rabbits. And so um, I label the mom's cage and then I have a movable label that I can put onto the rabbit tractor. And it's really simple. What we do here, you can do whatever you want to do, but um, on our farm, um, we have, this is a, one of our movable labels, it's a, just a number two. So when I take um, babies away from the mom in the number two cage, when I put her babies in a rabbit tractor, then I just hang a number on that rabbit tractor so I know that these correspond with the number two that's in my record keeping book. Um, and so I can keep track of when these guys need to be processed um, along with everybody else. So, um, you know, you do whatever works best for you, but you need to figure out a way to keep track of everybody, okay? So, you know, in my opinion, uh, record keeping is probably just as important as everything else, especially if you have more than one doe. At some point, you're going to forget. You're going to um, forget when to give that nesting box or when to wean those babies or when you should have rebred your doe. Um, and to keep track of everything, it can be kind of intimidating. Uh, so I just wanted to share with you the system that I use that works for me. Um, you know, you may have a better system and, you know, God bless you for that. Um, but I just wanted to share with you uh, to hopefully make things less intimidating, uh, to clear things, some things up for you. And I also wanted to make available to you our uh, rabbit breeding log that you can just you know, download and print off and start using for yourself. And you can keep it into a binder. Uh, it has room enough to put a three-hole punch in there. Um, and, uh, you know, you can just start keeping track just like we do. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys this resource to help keep things straight, okay? Um, so, you guys, I really appreciate everybody who's been following this series. Uh, it's been helpful to a ton of people. I'm totally humbled 
uh, about how many people this has reached and how many people this has helped. Um, and it, it really has been a blessing to me as well. Um, you know, before you go, if you would do me a favor and give me a thumbs up for this video, that would be great. If you have comments or questions, um, I am more than willing to answer those. Just drop those uh, in the comment section below. And before you go, if you have not subscribed to this uh, channel yet, please do that by hitting the subscribe button below. Um, until next time, you guys, take care, okay? And God bless.